Patrick Corbin was drafted by the Los Angeles Angels in the second round of the 2009 draft. He was traded in 2010 to the Arizona Diamondbacks as part of a package for pitcher Dan Harron. In the first five years of Corbin's career, he had his ups and downs, but overall was a solid pitcher for Arizona. But in his final year with the team is when he really broke out. He was 11-7, had a 3.15 ERA, struck out a career-high 246 batters, made the All-Star team, and was 5th in National League Cy Young voting. Because this was a contract year for Corbin and he was only 28, he was set up to get paid big. In the 2018 offseason, he was ranked by MLB.com as the third best available free agent behind Bryce Harper and Manny Machado. Before I get into it, welcome to the War Room and consider subbing to the channel if you're new. After rumors that he would sign with the Yankees, he ended up going to the Washington Nationals on a six-year, $140 million deal. The Yankees' failure to land Corbin pissed off a lot of New York fans, and they were even mocked for not landing him. At the time, this made sense because Corbin proved to be a very good major league pitcher that had loads of potential for the future. In his first year in Washington, he put together a very good season. He had a 14-7 record with a 3.25 ERA, 238 strikeouts, and played a part in the Nationals' first World Series win in franchise history. So one season into his six-year contract, he showed he was worth the money, especially since the contract was backloaded and he was making $12.5 million in year one. Honestly, if his ERA stayed in the threes and he was putting up around 200 strikeouts a year, then nobody would be complaining, those are very respectable numbers to have, but this is obviously easier said than done, because the 2020 COVID season was when things took a turn. This time, Corbin was 2-7, had a 4.66 ERA, and let up the most hits in the league with 85. So one bad year during a shortened season, not a big deal. It became a big deal last season when he had a 5.82 ERA, a league leading 16 losses, 111 earned runs, and 37 home runs let up, both of which led the league as well. All of a sudden, the $24 million he was getting paid seemed like a complete waste of money. When things looked like they couldn't get much worse, they unfortunately did. This season, his record's sitting at 4-15, he's got a 7.02 ERA, a league-worst 156 hits let up, and a league-worst 80 earned runs. On July 27th, he let up 6 earned in 2 thirds of an inning versus the Dodgers, and 2 starts later on August 6th, he did the exact same thing versus the Phillies. If his ERA stays like this, it would be the worst single season ERA for a player in the 21st century, and 4th worst all time. After making another $23 million this year, he'll rake in another $59 million over the next 2 seasons after this, just to be the worst pitcher in the league. Baseball is a weird sport where things like this can happen randomly to good players. We've seen the same thing happen to Joey Gallo this season, and it's always surprising watching it unfold. Corbin's got to figure things out quickly if he wants to stay in the league. Otherwise, it's only a matter of time before he's gone for good. So that wraps this one up. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.